Following up for you tonight, News 5 investigates first showed you back in September how squatters legally took over a man's home while he was out of town. Now that homeowner had to file an eviction to get his house back in the process while well, it took weeks. The chief investigative reporter Eric Ross found one homeowner who got a squatter out of her house much faster without having to go through that whole process. Eric. Robin Elizabeth, good evening. This homeowner knew it would likely take weeks, if not months, after filing an eviction notice to get a squatter out of her home. At the advice of her attorney, she filed a protection order against the squatter. It worked in her case, but as we found out, it may not work in others. It's as if somebody took a homeless camp and put it in my house. That's what it looks like. We followed Roland Hawkins through a month-long court process to get his home back after homeless people moved in while he was on a bike tour in Utah. We have another week before we even legally have to get out of here. It's a case of squatters versus homeowners. To me, it's trespassing. They're, they're definitely trespassing. Anthony Studebaker and his wife Joanne got locked out of their home on Corita in Palmer Park. David Rhodes and Ashley Hunter changed every door lock and closed all the blinds. But we knew they had to leave the house at some point. Can we have the keys to the home? You changed the locks on the home. Can we have the keys to the home back? The homeowner wants the keys to the home back. The Studebakers had to go to court on three separate occasions before a judge granted an eviction. When sheriff's deputies showed up, Rhodes refused to open the door. The locksmith had to come out to drill through the deadbolt so deputies could get inside. There's clearly a, a gap in law, and it's outrageous. State Representative Dave Williams is the first lawmaker vowing for change. We are going to draft some language up that closes these loopholes and uh, punishes these criminal squatters for uh, damaging you know, the lives of taxpayers and, and property owners. Senator Bob Gardner is also that's, outraged that's by sort of what we deep. uncovered. Legislatively, we need to do something and we need to find the right solution, so that's what we're going to set out to do. So this is, this is the room he was staying in. Pueblo homeowner Patricia Carter took these pictures of trash and debris she says a squatter brought with him. He pretty much treated it was like his house. I was an intruder in my own house. It was, it was just crazy. She says when she called police to remove him, police asked her to leave to keep the peace. I had to go and stay in a hotel for three nights. I had to take my dogs to a kennel and and he was allowed to stay here in the house. According to Carter's sworn testimony, the squatter was verbally abusive, threatening to give her a quote reality check when she asked him to leave. Carter also claims the squatter keyed her Hummer parked in her own driveway. She sought legal advice and instead of filing an eviction, she filed a protection order. As soon as the order was approved, the squatter skipped town. But this doesn't fix the overall problem, so Gardner is researching how other states are addressing squatting. California created a system whereby if you're going to be gone from the property, it's going to be vacant for an extended period, you could register the property with uh, the sheriff's office and that way um, if someone took up residence, the, the sheriff would then know and be able to evict immediately. And in Nevada, the second squatting offense is a felony, punishable by up to four years in jail and $5,000 in fines. Gardner wants to draft legislation giving law enforcement the authority to remove people who do not have a valid lease or do not own the home they are living in. Currently, Colorado homeowners must take these people to court. These homeowners, they're out for weeks having to evict these squatters, and then they have to actually fix up their homes after these squatters have damaged it. And that, that prevents legitimate tenants and potential renters from actually being able to find a place to live. Senator Gardner and Representative Williams believe their bill will likely face some opposition here from tenants' rights groups, and we explain why on our website. Just head to KOAA.com. Robin Elizabeth. And hearing those homeowner stories just makes me so sick. Right. So Patricia got the restraining order. Could the other two homeowners have done the same thing? No, unfortunately, and here is why. In order to take out a protection order against someone, someone has to threaten you either verbally or physically. In most cases we've reviewed, the squatters simply want to stand their own ground and not have any type of communication with the homeowners. I, so. can't, I can't believe they're getting pushed. They're going to get pushed back at the legislature when this comes up from any group. Right. And that's it, another story. We'll yeah, disturbing. that's another story we'll have to continue yeah. to track, and uh, we explain why as far as what right. that opposition 
uh, you know, could end up happening, you know, with this particular case right. on our website, KOA.com. As always, if you need our help solving a problem or issue in your community, let us know. Send an email anytime. Our address right there on the bottom of your screen, News5Investigates at KOAA.com.